My fellow salty Carthaginians who were part of the Mercenary to Citizen program, welcome back. And remember that um, uh, service guarantees citizenship, much like in Starship Troopers when you're a mercenary in Carthage's army. So these guys still serving me at Lamonum, and maybe one day I'll make good on my promise <laughs> to make them citizens. Uh, we've got our larger fleet amassing here in Carthage. One quick thing I want to mention. I'm recording these far in advance so I can make sure that you all have one every day at noon U.S. Central Time. Um, and so in order for me to do that, like I said, I'm recording ahead. When I see comments from you all that have good tips for me on the latest episode, it's going to take a couple of episodes for it to trickle down into it. So like, for instance, by having um, exterminated the populace at Tarantum um, was a tip that people had given me, but it's going to you know, you won't have seen it until episodes later. Another one that people are talking about is just using the tax rate in these settlements. Um, I mean, this this settlement already has a low tax rate, so there may be some where that's not the case, where I can use it. Um, but uh, in terms of... I can't really do anything with the tax rate here, I don't think, because it doesn't... doesn't have an exemption button that I can see. So I'm not, I mean, if there is an exemption button and I'm missing it, let me know. But um, like this particular settlement, there's, I can't lower the taxes. Uh, we could look. This one is set to auto manage, so I can't really auto manage settlement construction. Uh, okay, yeah, so it's set to auto manage because I don't have a governor there, but there's just, like, again, sometimes there's things that I can't understand why that one is set to auto manage and can't be removed from auto-manage, but this one isn't auto-manage and doesn't have, like, I don't know what drives that. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, maybe it's that I had a governor there at one point. I don't really understand what allows it to be managed or auto-managed. I don't get that far into the details on those type of things usually. Maybe I should from time to time, maybe I should. But uh, at least at the moment, I I don't really. So let's see. I'm getting some better troops put together for this army to fight the Iceni. We're certainly going to want some, or sorry, Britons. Uh, it wouldn't hurt to have some skirmishers. They're good against uh, elephants and chariots. So that could be a good thing to have against the Britons. I'm going to grab a few units of them. It's going to take a long time to get this army put together the way I want, unfortunately. But um, better to try and be prepared there, I think, than Sire. rather than not. I'd love to get this army off Carolus, but I'm struggling to at the moment. Ship That's why we were building this larger fleet. In Carthage, we got one more turn, and we have another Quin Karim. Or however you pronounce that. I'm, I could be doing it wrong. Uh, some people have mentioned that uh, they want to see some elephants over to Hannibal's army. That is an excellent point. Um, let's... I kind of need the extra trireme at the moment, though. But I will recruit some Hannibal, uh, elephants and we'll send them over to Hannibal. His army is um, nearly ready to continue the march. I'm trying to set up a good base of operations here, though, where I can replenish all of his troops if needed. And um, that way we can... Just kind of continue the push against the Romans. Continue the temple to Baal there at uh, Tarentum. Take a look here. Careless. Careless has not grown. Messana. Not much left we can do here. Go ahead and put the blacksmith in. The blacksmiths do make a big difference. I don't probably prioritize them as much as I should. Uh, they do make your troops considerably stronger. Um... Especially if you're using lower tier troops later into the game. They can certainly make your troops quite a bit stronger. I'm going to take the opportunity to get some better military infrastructure. Not that we're likely to need it at Asturica, but we're going to do it. Just in case. You never know when you might need to recruit something there. Uh, I'm going to take the opportunity to try and keep public order high in Asuka. And then at Narbo, we need to build the Governor's Palace. Any number of things we could build at Limonum. Um Start with the sewers. Dunum, nothing. Cyrene. Build some farms. Tingy. Let's go with some walls. Elysia, I don't have enough money. 
All right. So I have used up my capital, hopefully in ways that'll be useful to my republic slash empire. Like I said, call it what you want. Ships ready. If there's any easy pickings here, we have a small skippy eye fleet way out there, but what I'm gonna do, ready to sail. Uh, I should have retrained these ships. Oh, they are retraining, good. All right, well, Let's accept this, and then check where those marriage celebrations took place. Mighty general. Mighty general. This extra general could be Mighty handy. General. Um, I could either have him go govern Masana or Syracuse. Sire. Well, I what I could do actually is just leave him in Lily Bayum and take this Mighty older general. general. Actually, this guy, the newer general, actually has better command traits, so we'll leave this guy to be the governor. And we'll uh, get an army together. And I need an army up here to pressure the remaining Gallic settlements and the Julii, but first we have to gain naval supremacy, so one step at a time, though that is a good step in the right direction to have that commander there. So I'm excited about that. Oh, the Iceni are back. I can't say I'm surprised. Let's see what they're attacking me with and see whether or not sallying out is a feasible opportunity. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to finish any additional cavalry, but we did pick up a couple of Libyan spears. They have mostly Britain warbands. Wow, they do have one unit of heavy chariots. I'm not well equipped for fighting heavy chariots. They also have a unit of light chariots. One chosen sword, and then a head hurler. I think we might as well try and fight this, because if I wait, only more of their troops are gonna show up. We're gonna have to be very careful, very careful of the heavy chariots. The best thing for me to have would be something like, um, Skirmishers, who can throw javelins at the chariots. Or archers, something like that. Obviously archers, the only thing I could have is Cretans, and we just don't have access to them at the moment. So, I'm gonna have to throw in my Libyan spears, and back them up with cavalry, and hope that we can have enough mass and damage to stop the heavy chariot. Uh, because if you don't, and it starts to chain route you, you obviously you end up in big trouble real quick. I'm not terribly worried about all the the warbands, but if we cannot gain some advantage quick over the chariots, uh, we will get into a lot of trouble really quick. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll get into a lot of trouble really quick with the, um, the chariots. Okay, that's good enough. Let's begin the slow and tedious process of Exiting the gates. They're gonna go over this way, which is an odd move. I would have thought they maybe want to go that way. This seems like it's gonna provide them a lot of not as favorable terrain. Look at their uh, stupid light chariots already shooting at me. They already got a kill! Lucky jerks. Yeah, they got multiple kills with their stupid chariots. They have they must have long range missiles. Two hit points, special attack, can form Cantabrian Circle. Fast moving. Can frighten nearby enemies. So they do not have the long range. Alright. But they do have a lot of other. Capabilities. Oh, look, some of their warband are going to get caught here. They may end up in melee with me. Get him! Not the cavalry, preferably. I can't really outflank properly here because I don't have a whole unit out here to fight them, so I don't, 
don't know if this will actually end up being beneficial to me or not, because look at my units when I give an attack order. They actually start moving back towards the gate. Come on. I want to catch and destroy one of their units here for free. And then they've got a chosen sword unit head up. So this may have been a mistake for me to try and do this. could end up getting routed too as my units turn their back with all of this stupid screwed up movement. Get out of there! I don't really have a whole unit that's exited the gates yet, unfortunately. Chosen sword's gonna connect with me over there. I'm gonna have to go put some pressure on that chosen swordsman. Or else it's gonna start shredding my Iberian. Yeah, look at the numbers dropping on that Iberian infantry, and they're barely even engaged with me. This is a little bit of a uh, rodeo that I didn't want here, but I mean, if, if my units will attack and some sensible formation here. We should be able to bust this Chosen Sword quickly and early. Oof, I can't afford a lot of losses though because we already got to deal with the Cavalry unit. And this Chosen Sword unit is staying in combat much longer than I want. It's wavering. There it goes. Finally broke. Alright, that was not beautiful. The, uh... Kind of got the job done, but only just. Alright, let's get all my units out, let them rest. I mean, we did get to kill the Chosen Sword. That's pretty great. We got a light chariot over there. The heavy chariot is right in the middle. Which means I'm going to have to try and back up my Iberians with... My Libyan Spears, because the Heavy Chariot's likely to come at us straight down the middle. Um, let's see. Just get all our stamina put back together, get our troops fully rested. I mean, that was certainly a gain of sorts to get rid of that Chosen Sword with relatively few losses. Which means that any of their remaining infantry is relatively insignificant. That Head Hurler, though, is scary. For those of you not familiar with this game, Head Hurlers are significantly powerful units. I may have been better off to just let these guys siege me, but I'm worried they would show up with another stack and I'd end up having to fight off like almost 8,000 Britons. Trying to think about my strategic option. Oh, they have another chosen sword over there. Units. Um. Units. Units. I actually think I'm going to try something different. I think I'm going to try and overwhelm one flank. Maybe try and ignore their chariots till we've wrapped up a bigger portion of their army. I want to try and run at this flank. They've moved their chosen swords off that flank. And then see if I can begin a wrap up process while just kind of holding the enemy back. ground first and then just outright charge and we're not gonna charge my left side though we're gonna hold my left side
something like this. See, I'm just gonna try and hold the left. I'm gonna move up a little here in the middle. Yeah, cavalry is going to need to be close for follow up over here, especially with that heavy chariot making a menacing move towards that flank. Let's keep an eye on the center of this Britain line. Alright, let's reinforce. No, 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 no! Over here! Crap. Or no, wait, that's their unit. I thought we got insta-routed there. Alright, turn into the heavy chariots. Turn into the heavy chariots. Turn into the heavy chariots. Oh gosh, we're fighting uphill now. Alright, this actually is getting a little bit dicey. We got up here, warband. Uh, fall back over here, just protect the flank. We can kill this general right here. Can we get that general? If we can stop that general, that'd be a big... Oh yeah, that is a good sign. I'm fighting uphill right here, which is really bad. Problem with uh, the freaking chariots is that even while they're routing, they can rip you up. Yeah, even routing chariots can tear up your troops. Uh, we need more infantry support up here. The enemy general is not dead. I'm gonna have to give up this chase though. And help blob bust. The AI is cooperating with me for the most part, though, in terms of helping me break them up. Oh, I'm risking my general here. We've got a really nice wrap-up going here, though, and only one unit of chariots came back from routing. Alright, this was actually a pretty fortuitous outcome for us. I am pretty pleased with this. Many things ended up going well for me there. The Britain leadership, or morale broke as I needed it to, and the wrap-up happened as I needed it to. That was very close, though, because the AI started to kind of close in on me there. And if just one of my Iberians would have cracked, started a route, there's a very good likelihood that my whole army falls apart. I don't know what you're doing, just kind of like following beside this unit, but I actually want you to kill them. Alright, we need to mop up Okay, we've, we've given them massive losses, so it should disband their army, I think, at this point. So let's go ahead and exit the battle. Your victory is complete. Yeah, that was a very, very good battle for us. Very good battle for us. We were very fortunate there. Um, I don't know if y'all are paying attention to the unit cards while I was attacking those chariots. But um, chariots in this game have scythes on the wheels. And um, that, that's what does a lot of their damage when they're in combat. Uh, the scythes chopping up infantry, cavalry, it's effective against both. Um, so in Rome 2, you know, sometimes you would see people, like, put a heavy cavalry unit to try and block up a scythe chariot, and occasionally it would work. In this game, there's enough heavy chariots, they can, they can absolutely cut through cavalry as well. And when that unit's routing and you give chase to it, because you might think, oh good, I'll kill it while it's routing, you will still take losses to the scythes. And so, in that respect, this game becomes very challenging when it comes to chariots because you can get jacked up real fast um, by the chariots. So, in any case, there we go. I'm going to retrain. 
uh, my units. We've got more uh, reinforcements training. That is a good piece of news for us. This army is likely to siege us, though, on this very turn in, so that's why I'm trying to recruit or retrain as many of those troops that can, because we're likely to have to fight a similar battle, hopefully with less chariots, uh, in the next turn or so. Ready to sail. I'm going to combine that. Ready to so sail. now I've got two Bunkerims and a bunch of Triremes in this navy. Ready to sail. And it will be ready to come out and challenge some of these larger enemy fleets. Ready to sail. And then we have these other fleets which aren't quite as powerful but can ready still do sail. some work for us. Alright, finally got supreme. rid of that joke of a Roman ready fleet there. Yes, mighty lord. Make ready for combat. Go get rid of this fleet. Oh, we didn't get rid of it, but we pushed it back. Ships ready. Yes, mighty lord. Let's see, where's our other fleet? I, great lord. Ready to sail. Um, let's see, do I have anything? Start training elephants. I, great lord. I'm gonna go ahead and start I, moving this lord. fleet out. Try and go get in some engagements. Let's see. Building that slinger facility there. Everything is looking pretty good in these Roman settlements. Like I said, the Brutii are still around, unfortunately, because they captured Thermon. So I wish we could have extincted them all in one go there. It's unfortunate that we didn't. I've got this army down here ready to capture Siwa. This is Xenophanes. Cyrene is going to be in pretty good shape now. We've built the... No, we haven't built the upgraded settlement, but the building of these farms should cause the population growth to turn back on. Um, what I could do to speed the process, though, is I could disband this mercenary unit. And then go ahead and build... The uh, upgraded settlement. Get that started. Let's go take a look. Swear two. Thapsis is ready for another building. Let's upgrade them to a dockyard. And at Cordoba, there's not much I can do for public order, unfortunately. The city is just eternally pissed off. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I can't change the tax rate in, unless you all know of a way that I can like completely exempt it. I haven't seen it yet. Um, I don't know, maybe there's like a, a settlement income dynamic policy. Uh, it doesn't allow me to to do anything with the, the taxes. So, not really sure how to approach that one. So yeah, Cordoba, there's really not a whole lot else I can do. Um, let's take a look at some of our other settlements here and get some stuff queued up. Scalabus is pretty happy, so let's get the Libyan Spearmen unlocked. That, again, that way we can use those all over my empire, basically. That's the objective when I'm building those, is just make it to where, no matter where I'm at, I can retrain and use better troops. Not be forced to only use my cheapest troops. Same thing here, because they're happy at the moment. And at Alicia, let's go ahead and put in the large Temple of Baal. We're waiting to do the replenishment there. How goes our siege here? Five turns, and they collapse in on themselves. I don't want to wait a terribly long time, per se, but at the same time, like, I don't know. Getting that free result without having to fight my way through the walls does sound pretty nice. Kind of torn. Let's take a look at what we got here. Town grows, so we took care of Cyrene. Enemy army routes in front of Theophanes. That was very, very fortuitous. A merchant died. That was the one over there, so that's not that big a deal. Speaking of merchants, we, um... Could probably go ahead and 
recruit some and send them out, but I don't know. I just haven't been all that into it. They're an interesting addition to the game, but, you know, I'm just... Stuff like that has never been, like, a real deal breaker for me. I think some people will enjoy it a lot more than I do. Air, it makes you a ton of money if you use it right. It might. If it does, it, you know, feel free to explain, but I just, um... I mean, I haven't seen them doing anything insane. Maybe if you had enough of them, it starts to make some difference. Or maybe earlier in the game, it makes more of a difference. Uh, the Julii came south to try and regain honor on behalf of their green cousins. Uh, little do they know, though, they've set themselves up for a pretty big hit here. Need some town watch. Help hold this settlement. Roton's gonna be pretty upset. They could even rebel. This army will be under your direct command. Should I let the AI control my troops? I'm so worried they'll get my general killed. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and fight on our own. <laughs> I don't trust them to not kill my, my other commander. And even though I can't pronounce his name, I very much need him as a part of my faction. I'm very protective of my family members. And Carthage family is a big thing. <laughs> we want to have a huge family tree. Many brave soldiers have seen the dawn. Kind of weird deployment the zone there. In the west? How many of the enemy already pray for night? All right, Hannibal. Let's gain another big victory over Rome. Rome was foolish enough to come and face us. Let's punish them for this decision. Loose formation right in front of my... Main line. Long shields on the flanks. Units run. Units. New troops have arrived on the battlefield. Send them to the point of crisis. Uh, Romans are up here set up in their triplex ACs formation. You have some reinforcements coming here, but the uh, the number that it will come on all at one time, that's my other general. I'm gonna kind of just... Actually, you know what? I'm gonna keep him here. And just protect him. Spear unit. Those reinforcements aren't really my main concern, though the Romans are clearly reacting to their presence. cavalry to get charged by. It is a Libyan spear unit, but still a little bit frightening. So, I'm going to move up my troops. I want to try and start to use my range against the Romans. I think that it'll force them to charge if my slingers begin the attack. I'm going to move up just a hair more. Nope, they're coming for it. Bad gummit! Freaking misclick, and then the steam thing got up on my screen. Gosh! It's annoying. <laughs> there we go. I was trying to cancel that movement order, and then it brought up the steam menu, and then, like, made a big misclick. Romans are probably gonna try and throw their pila. I'm gonna hit them with some slings. If they throw their pillar at my slingers, then that's actually my intended use of the slingers, is to not allow the Romans to use that on my mainline infantry. I should be able to cause almost as many... Pull back slingers. Sacred band into hoplite phalanx. Hey, slingers, when I gave you an order to retreat, I actually kind of meant it, you know? Uh, this is crazy. Like, the general actually expects you to follow an order, but... Attack. Attack. 
Stop fighting. There you go. Let the sacred band do what the sacred band does best and own Romans. See, Pastati don't last long when they're up against the uh, the sacred band. I should start it. Miss. Apparently, there's like a couple of slingers. Wait, did it get too far. Yeah, there was one slinger retreating back there. Reset my sacred band. Right, my slingers are still doing a little bit of work. Now the enemy is out of range of my slingers, though, I think. Push my slingers up within my phalanx a little. Keep trying to tempt the Romans forward. The whole purpose of light infantry, though, is to screen your main army. So if I take some losses with the slingers, doesn't much matter. is going to get absolutely slaughtered. Charged into two armored spear units. Oh, the Romans keep fainting me here. I don't know why the Romans won't just all out commit to this fight. It's certainly not to their advantage to be doing it piecemeal. See, if you cover the distance with your hoplites and then re-enter phalanx, that is typically your best option. Better to not click the attack order, though, so let's try it without clicking the attack order. So see, like right here, I'm going to run this sacred band forward. Dang it, I got them all turned again and I didn't mean to. Send some reinforcements here. Let's go help my Libyans over here, because they're getting pretty overwhelmed. I lost one Libyan. But we just wrapped that flank. Alright, let's move up the next sacred band. The sacred band is in a weird and awkward... Formation. I'm just going to try and straighten them out. This one's getting a little bit better. Push. Hoplites definitely require a considerable amount more micromanagement. And, you know, it, it's a benefit when you can get the engagements the way it is that you want it. It is obviously a downside whenever you are not as good at microing your troops. But, I mean, hoplites are brutally effective in, in frontal combat. So, like, these Principe, for instance, are getting absolutely shellacked by my uh, forces. I think the Romans are retreating now, like, heading for the edge of the map. They most certainly are. Let's go kill their ballistas. Should be able to wrap up a lot of this. Let's give chase and see if we can route some other units. Should route that ballista crew pretty quickly. I'm gonna try and stop these Principe and kill them because they're a valuable target. Gotta be careful with my cavalry though because it is a heavy infantry and only a light cavalry. I just need to fix them and keep them from retreating long enough to catch up with an infantry unit to keep them fixed better. I kill their artillery units. All 
Alright, we slowed down that other Principe. Let's, let's not get ourselves totally killed on it. This one I can now surround and destroy. Good stuff. Alright, so let's make the slaughter of the Julii relatively complete. Whew, taking some Pila. That is a rather nasty volley. I'm gonna attack them from behind with a large amount of cavalry and then turn around and charge them with this one once we make connection. Should be able to overwhelm them with numbers and then a flank. If I can catch them, I don't know why we're having a problem catching a infantry unit while we're on horseback, but apparently that's a thing. There we go. Rest in pieces. Alright, so we got them. Let's say that was a good battle. Julie, I lost most all of their troops, including some that were rather valuable. Some Ballista, some Principe. I took most of my losses in my light infantry, some in my Libyans. I cannot yet retrain my light infantry, but I will be able to quite soon. So it seems like an acceptable result. I can't quite make it back into Croton, which is not good because it could straight up like rebel and I lose the settlement. That is a possibility based on the way I chose it. Oh man, Carthage has the plague. I, great lord. That's not really what we wanted. Um, I'm gonna go run an attack on that fleet. Is this fleet to uh, keep this small, ridiculously tiny Gaul fleet from blockading Carthage? And we got another tiny Gaul fleet here that is surviving with like two men. Santa, we train those ships. All right, so we may be able to gain some naval supremacy with this fleet. May not, not 100% certain. We did get our troops retrained here and then also got some new units. So um, I've got quite a lot of cavalry at the moment, decent bit of infantry. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start putting some skirmishers on the battlefield because these guys are really good against chariots. They're kind of hard to get them into position um, because their range is limited, but if you can do it, like uh, for instance, get a, a, a chariot archer or something to come up close enough to skirmish with you, the skirmishers are very good against Mighty chariots. Let's see, four turns till they surrender. Let's check our news here. Death stalks the land, settlement besiege, but no longer. All right. People also mention that there's a screen for transferring followers and that we may consider moving followers off of the older characters and onto the younger ones. Probably not a bad idea um, to move these followers. But uh, let's see, Factioner, so... Well, how you do it exactly. Factioner's follower... Archimedes currently following as the maximum number of followers. Let's see. So let me see. So I've got the ages that conquered. And I want to move it to Miss Masinissa Barca. So move followers. All action characters show all. Followers show all. No followers selected. I said I don't know 100% how to pull this off. I haven't messed with it yet.
Okay, it says move followers. Followers currently following. I think you have to pick the person you want to move stuff to, maybe? Let me see if I can figure this out. Um, see, I, this is why I typically don't mess with stuff like this. Like, it probably is helpful, but... Takes a whole bunch of time, and I'm usually too lazy, and I just like fighting battles. Um, let's see... First, I gotta find my guy. Here he is. Move them. The follow will take 12 turns. Tick the box. So basically, we would need to find the guys following the ages and have them move over to this guy because they're in the same army, and it'll be all the ones with one turn. And if we do this, this guy will have all these followers, even if the ages dies soon, which he probably will. So maybe we want to do that. So again, we'll look for these ones that say one, because we know that the number of turns is basically representing how long it would take them to move and walk over. Freeman Clerk. Let's just try this and see how it goes. Mercenary Captain. Merchant. Priest of Baal. Shield bearer. Alright, that should work. Let's move him over. There we go. We moved him over um, from our older character to our younger one. And we'll s that way we'll preserve them. And we can do that in any, s any place, basically. Or we think like someone's gonna get old and kick the bucket soon. There's a younger commander, we can try and move it over to him. But there we go, at least we know how it works now. Alright, figured that out. Another piece of advice absorbed from the chat, so thank you. Keep trying to build that up. Ammonum. Grab a port because it helps with income. Cyrene is upgrading. And Terran Tomb. Let's go ahead and build the large temple of Baal. Alright, we had some leftover cash this time, so that's that is great news. Let's end our turn. Siwa is besieged. We should go ahead and prepare some. Rams. And let's end the turn. Egypt is likely to start a war with us soon because we're right up on their doorstep with our armies. Oh boy. Balance of power is pretty close here. I have in total like all heavy ships. The Romans have some light ones. I don't know how that balances in. We actually have slightly more soldiers deployed and a better command. Uh, but I mean, this is a risk for our new fleet. We don't have any embarked units. Oh boy. Crap! Well, we sunk one of their ships. They didn't sink any of ours, so... Disengage. I guess that's not the end of the world, because we can try and get back to Carthage, retrain, and get back on the seas. So Numidia is going to sally out against me with their king. And their factionary, which is probably all they have left. This is their last settlement, so... Numidia is going down in a blaze of glory here, folks. I don't know if it's glory, but it'll be a blaze. Most likely just a blaze of death, but... We'll see. This should be the end of Numidia as a faction, though. Now is the time for battle! Pull on your armor! Grasp your shield and take up the blade! For our enemies, the sun has risen for the last time! Indeed, it has. Spread out our Iberians a little. I'm gonna loose formation these Libyans. Let's 
get my cavalry together on the flanks here. Units. The enemy have brought up more men. Send them to the afterlife. All right, there's their faction leader. I'd love to get a load of javelins into the face of one of these bodyguard units because they are going to be massively powerful. I'm going to screen my Iberian infantry with my javelins. I want to make sure and stand still because I want to get javelin throws just as soon as it is possible. It's yet to get an enemy into pretty, pretty close range before you can shower them with javelins. See, they may even get their charge off before we get a throw. The units are slow to react and range is, is short. But this should kind of spoil their charge. around them as best we can. It'll give those bodyguards a lot to chew on, essentially. Go for the surround here. Bodyguards are in pretty rough shape. The enemy king flees. And he's dead. Back to his palaces and prostitutes. <laughs> I love the, the insults flee. in this game. Chase them from the field and They're so the severe. All right, there goes the uh, faction heir. Will run like I like how it said the, the enemy king is slain. Um, that's good news. I think um, so. Got the faction heir. I think he's still alive in there. There he goes. The enemy general was a fool. He so that is probably the last two family members of the Numidian faction. And the only thing that's left is a few of these javelin men. I'm going to run them down to ensure that the settlement is ours. Victory is sweet indeed. Scarface. We killed Scarface. Didn't know that he was here. Maybe he had a Tommy gun. Road to victory is through expanding your territory and developing your economy. That is a oh, yes. fine tip indeed. Yeah, look, they switched over to a rebel faction because we killed their leaders. It would have actually been better for me to not have killed their leaders and taken it because now I got to actually. Hang on, this man is passed on. Theophanes, the conqueror, our faction leader. Where was he at? I don't remember where we left him. Um. Solve this. So they just, yeah, see, they get new units, which is really frustrating. They pick up a rebel, rebel general and um, all these new units, which is, this kind of to me feels like a little bit of a glitch in the game that shouldn't happen. I'm going to auto resolve this hopefully without getting. CA, please, come on. What is with the auto resolve? Goodness sakes. Uh, I guess they just really want you to fight each battle personally. Goodness sakes. Look at it! What do they have? They have one rebel general. How is he going to overcome all of this? Uh, someone needs to make an auto-resolve mod. That'll be one thing I pick up for sure for this game. Something that can make the auto-resolve slightly more reasonable. I understand it's an old game, so I don't expect the auto resolve to be really on Men, point, but I mean, really? Is inevitable, but like, is there really? Is in the balance. Act with courage, all noble soldiers, and victory is in our grasp. Okay. Gosh. Auto resolve trash that we need. All right, here we go. I'm gonna put my. Okay, here we go. Start the battle. I'm gonna move these guys up. That way the enemy can't just shower me with javelins while I'm doing the ram and then me have no recourse on them. Let's fast forward, get this pointless siege over with. Units! No 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 no. Units! 
Your soldiers and the battling ram are at the walls. Now comes the test of their courage. Move at the double. All right, start ramming the walls down. I've got my guys covered with javelin men. When the enemy comes close, they're going to get pelted with javelins. Assuming my guys can throw their javelins. The smile upon you. The enemy walls are breached. Iberian infantry. We are getting a few kills here and there. You can see the bodies in the streets. So we have managed to kill a fair number. There's the rebel general. Let's move all of our Iberians into the settlement. Units, double time. Units. I guess some of my guys got their javelins off because. Units, units, height formation. Height formation. Units. Units, move back to the general quickly. Let's pull all our troops in so we can try and overwhelm the enemy. The cowardly enemy have lost the walls. Send your troops and take the rest of the settlement. I'm going to kind of pitch my mercenaries into the um, rebel general to spoil his charge. Start wearing him down. And whatever javelins I can throw it during this process are just kind of a bonus. Over here and try and kill these skirmishers. They've got their own javelins thrown behind me now, though. That's kind of annoying. Alright, Iberians, let's close on the rebel, rebel general. See if we can overwhelm them now that we've kind of started to soften them up a little. Rebel General's actually holding out pretty darn well at the moment. It's less than fortunate for me. Okay, he's starting to fall apart. We're getting hit with a lot of javelins from behind, though, so again, this is less than ideal. I have an attack order, but the, uh, the weird pathfinding won't allow me to complete the attack. Let's to defeat some skirmishers here. And defeat a few of these skirmishers here. There we go. Wow, what happened there, Auto Resolve? I mean, I didn't even try particularly hard to avoid casualties. And why is the countdown still going? Like, we won. Is there any Emidians left? Rebels? Euler? Alright, maybe one of their units is still sitting somewhere hidden. I guess. I don't know. Fleeing? Way to go, Auto Resolve. Once again, proven your complete lack of ability to predict how a battle is going to end up. And Numidians are gone, and Siwa is ours, so uh, faction destroyed. So that'll make two factions down. Victory! Since we've gotten Spain, Broody I are lucky to still be this alive. Uh, we're going to exterminate the populace so that we don't have to... Well, actually, no, because the Numidians have the same culture as me, so we don't get the culture penalty. So it should be okay. Uh, we don't get as much culture penalty. The people may still be upset with being conquered, but if I remember right, the Numidian settlements are relatively easy for us uh, to take over. So that is what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and disband all my, my mercenaries, and hopefully be able to re-recruit some soon. So we're going to put these back into the pool. I guess I could have just merged them, but whatever. Let's just put them all back out to pasture. 
mercenary to citizen program here. I'm gonna go ahead and start recruiting some uh, skirmishers as well. In case Egypt attacks us, I wanna have some on hand. And I think that's gonna leave us in pretty good shape here. Proton did not rebel. Pretty fortunate for me. Pretty fortunate for me. I need to retrain groups. Alright, so we've got troops retraining. Terran Tomb is safe. Julia, I have another army on the way, so we'll likely be fighting them. Let's see what's She's happening ready. with our navy. Can't get around that Roman fleet, unfortunately. But I have to just come over here to hide from the Romans temporarily with the fleet. It'll take me longer to retrain it, because I can only retrain the triremes out here. And I need to take this and go kill another rebel army over there. Um... I think it's about all we're going to be able to do for this episode. I think it's that's pretty good timing for us to call it on this one. Uh, we're going to be able to take this... Well, I want to make better progress, so... We took Siwa. I, I'm going to wait on this settlement. I really want to take it without fighting, so as to get zero casualties, if, if possible. I mean, that would really be my preference here. So, I'm going to wait, and... Try and wait this out. I'm going to put some stone walls around Alicia as well. It'll make it harder for the Britons to potentially push back against us. Alright, our army here. We can get this Julii fleet and then start scouting ahead. Should put us in better position. Where are my other fleets, by the way? I thought I had another... Oh, I did have another fleet here. Crap, I could have doubled up on the Romans. Shoot. Well, I may go ahead and attack them while they're weak from the last battle. Now that is good, we got a victory. I don't know where the Romans fled to, probably out here into the fog of war. No, over here. Alright, well, that is pretty... that is good news for us. That's really good news for us, in fact. So, yeah, good. That That's one Roman fleet out of the way. This one can be retrained. We didn't have any ships sunk. We can bring it back and, and retrain it. So, good. Then a little progress in the naval department, too. Anyway, Air of Carthage, signing out for now. Thank you all for watching. I will see you soon with some more Carthage campaign action.